Hi, and welcome to my video for Coursera's Introduction to Interactive Programming with Python, Week 6. We are working on Blackjack, and this video is about Step 5 of the process, which is implementing a getValue method for the hand class. And in this video, I will be talking not just about how to do Step 5, but also about how to use logic, how to think in baby steps about what you're doing, and how to use pseudocode. <clears throat> so I hope that step five can actually just be kind of an example of these things. Now, if you're working on step five, that's great, but if you haven't done the previous steps, you can still watch this video and it will still help you. Or you might have already done step one through four. Um, step one through four had us look at the card class that's already been defined for us, implement some of the methods for the hand class, implement the methods for the deck class, and then also make um, make a deal function to that works with uh, this works with the deal button and it shuffles the deck and deals out two cards for the dealer and the player so okay so back to step five how to do the get value for a hand well how do we think about this one way would be to first review what we know so here's what it says in the development steps implement the get value method for the hand class you should use the provided value dictionary to look up the value of a single card in conjunction with the logic explained in the video lecture for this project to complete the value of the hand, to compute the value of the hand. Once you've implemented the get value method, test it using the testing template. Okay, so the purpose of get value is to figure out the value of the hand. We're going to use the value dictionary. Video talked about the logic that we're going to go over in this video as well. Great. Okay, then I went and looked in the program template. Here's what I found that I thought was related. They have some globals for the cards. They've got suits and ranks. These are already defined for us. You'll notice the ranks have a one character, a one character representation of the different cards, like A for Ace, two for two, three, so on. And then the values dictionary, this is the values dictionary it was talking about. The values dictionary um, correlates a value, like one for ace, two for two, and so on. This one for ace is important since we want to count the ace as a one when we're adding up the cards, and then only at the end decide whether to add ten. Aces count as either one or eleven, and that's the logic we're going to be working on, but we're going to do it by using this, this value dictionary. is going to just use one to start with, and then later we'll decide whether to make it 11. So that's going to be real helpful for us. Good. Whoops, okay. Then the other thing was from the program template. Uh, I took what the program template said, and I just, I, I listed it here again. It says count aces as one. Th these are comments that are in the hand class. Count aces as one. If the hand has an ace, then add 10 to the hand value if it doesn't bust. Well, bust means if it doesn't make it go, if it, if it bust means it goes over the value and the player loses or whoever's hand it is loses. So it's saying add 10 to the hand if that doesn't make it go over 21. Compute the value of the hand. See the blackjack video, which also has these same guidelines. Okay, and then below this line here, I've actually taken the same thing. I've taken the same information and listed it again. Um, I did get a little bit more specific here. This is also a statement that's in the program template. It says define get value self. What I want to notice and point out about that is that we can see there are no parameters passed in except for the hand. Self is going to be the hand of cards. So we know that a hand of cards has to be passed into this method that we're making. But there's no other parameters. That's it, just the hand of cards. And then the rest of this, compute the value of the hand, count aces as one. If the hand has an ace, then add 10 to the hand value if it doesn't bust. So this is what it's set up here. I've just kind of, I've listed it out for myself, again, as I'm thinking through it. It helps me to uh, think about it in little, in little bits, and I wanted to get the order in an order that made more sense to me. So this is what I took out of this, is that we know that there's no parameters but the, except for the hand. Compute the value of the hand is our, is our purpose. Count aces is one. If there's an ace, add 10. 
if it doesn't bust. Okay, now what about if there's two aces? Uh, this sometimes comes up. If there's two aces, do you want to ever add 20? Well, no, because that even if the, you just had two aces, that would make it 22. It would always bust. So the most you're ever going to add is 10. Let's talk about thinking slowly and logically. Now, this is really one of the main things we have to learn to do programming, is to think slowly and logically and tell the program exactly what to do in these little tiny minute parts. Most of the problems that I see students struggling with are not about Python syntax or about statements or even about error messages. Most of the problems students in the class have are about being able to break down what they want to have happen into small steps and express it clearly. Pseudocode is a word for saying in English or some other language what you want a program to do. Pseudocode can include a few programming words or it may not. So I'm going to use this as an example of pseudocode. So we say to ourselves, well, what should the get value method do? And then we try and say it in English. So here's an example of that. Here's what the get value method should do. In order to add up the value of a hand of cards, for each card in the hand, I'm going to get the value of the card using the values dictionary. I want to add that card to the total. I want to have a running total. If there's an ace in the hand, then I need to add 10 to the total, except if it would go over 21, and then don't add 10. And then I want to return the total for the hand. That's what I want this to do. So it sounds like I'm pretty clear, right? This is what I want to do. Okay, and I've just, again, I've listed out, I'm kind of trying to do it in English, but I'm also sort of moving towards something that looks a little bit like code. And then I want to talk about this statement in red, if there's an ace in the hand, add 10 to the total, except blah, 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 blah. So we know we've got some work to do here. Now, there's a, a number of ways somebody could resolve this, but I'm going to show you one of them. But if there's an ace in the hand, add 10 to the total. Well, do I want to do that for each card in the hand? Here I've got for each card in the hand. Do I want to do this part for each card in the hand? Well, I would argue that if we add 10 to the total, we don't know what the total of all the cards is yet. We're doing this for each card as we go along. So if, if I'm on the first card and I've got two cards in the hand and I add 10, I don't know what the next card is going to be. It could be that I've added 10, but with the second card, it's going to go over the total. So I don't know that yet. So I don't think I can do this for each card in the hand as I go along. I could figure out if there's an ace for each as I go along, but I don't want to compare and add 10 yet until I know the total of the hand. That's what I think. So I'm working towards what is my thinking here as I, as I and here in this next slide I've got the same things I've, I'm just I'm working towards code slowly bit by bit and I'm going to start here with this part that we were just talking about and say um, I'm going to make this if not part of the for statement basically I'm going to make it start over here because I don't want to do it while I'm doing the part that's for each card. Okay, I'm going to say I want to do this part about checking for 10 separately. So what I've done is I've taken and made, made that if come out to here so that it's not part of this for loop. So that's important. Um, hope that made sense. Okay, so then let's go through and see what I've changed. I've just made it a little bit more refined. I, I took that define get value self from the program template. That's more specific than what I had before. And then I said for each card in self hand, that's a little bit more specific. I'm just moving towards code slowly. Uh, you don't have to do it this way, but in my example, I'm saying I'm going to have a variable. I don't know what the variable is, but I'll have some variable and I'll get the value of the card I'm on, this, you know, as the, this, this card. I'm going to use the values dictionary. Again, you'll have to figure out how to say that, but I'm going to have some variable that has the value of the card, add it to the total. If the card is an ace, and I say I'm going to use get rank to figure that out, get rank is a method that is in the uh, card class that was already defined for us. So if the card is an ace, 
then I want to set a variable for aces. Now there are different ways somebody could do this. I'm just showing you one way. So what I said is that I'm going to do this check as part of my part of my loop for the for each card. But I'm not going to do the part about adding 10 yet. I'm going to do that later. Does that make sense why I would do it that way? Again, this is this is the process of thinking through it. Is that going to work if I do the check to see if it's an ace, then I'll set a variable that's, I'm going to set up some kind of variable that tells me if there's aces, but I'm not going to add the 10 till later. Okay, that's what I'm saying. So then I say if if the variable, I'm all done with that. If the variable is set that there is an ace in the hand, then I want to add 10 to the total, except if it makes the total greater than 21. I don't want to add 10, and then I'll return the total. Well, this part here still needs a little bit of work to how am I going to say that. So. Again, I'm thinking through each part one at a time very slowly, moving forward. Okay, so then in this next slide, again, it's the same, this same pseudocode, but I'm getting closer and closer. This time I've decided, well, I'm going to just, I'm not going to put the actual statements, but I'm going to say, I know I'm going to have some kind of global declarations. If I have any global variables, that'll go at the top. Um, I've said I've got some total that I'm using that's got to be some kind of variable, and I've got some kind of variable for aces. So those are going to get initialized up here. Any other, if there's any other variables that we have, those would go up here. So this is just, again, it's not, it may not be perfect, but I'm moving towards what my code will look like. Then here's my for statement that I had before. Same thing, variables got the value of the card. Total gets uh, the card added on. This is all the same. I didn't change anything in that part. I did add this print here, and I added this print here. And this is something I would very typically do while I'm writing the code, is I would go ahead and put some print statements, because I'm, I'm going to want to check and see if I'm doing this right. I'm going to want to check with different situations, with no aces, with one ace, with two aces, whatever. I may want to run, run, run this code with these print statements for a little while, until I'm pretty confident that I've got this right. So I've added a print. I've added two prints, one here and one here. And this one well, it says get value before aces. So typically in a print statement, I'm going to want to say where I'm printing from so I can identify which part of the code is running. Might be these are my only print statements. It's not very confusing, but it might be that I have other print statements. So I just go ahead and do that. And then I can figure out what, what variables are going to be relevant here. So I've got self hand. That'll be good so I can see what cards are, are involved. Uh, my variable for total and my variable for aces. And I've got the same variables down here. So basically I'm looking at what did I have before I did this if and what did I have after I did this if. And I'm going to look at a few cases and see whether I think it's working right. Then I've got, um, let's see, in the last slide we had that if there was a, an ace in the hand, we wanted to add 10 unless it made it go over 21. So in this case I've made that into one statement with an and in between. There are other ways you could do it that would also work perfectly fine, but this is an example. So if that's the case, then we add 10 to the total, we print and we return the total for the hand. And you can see now I'm getting pretty close to code, so close that I'm worried about whether this video is a little over the line. I don't think it's too much different than what they've already shown us, but again I'm, I'm trying to show you this process of working towards code. Okay, whoops. There we go. So what I think I've tried to demonstrate in this video, what I hope you'll take away, is that when you're trying to work out what to do in a part of your code, you can review what you know about what you're, what about the, the assignment, about how you're going to do it. State what you're trying to do. Think in very baby steps, because programs are in very tiny baby steps. Use pseudocode to work towards the solution. Replace the pseudocode with code as the solution becomes more clear to you. Add print statements to check your code, even while you're still working on the code. And then, of course, it said we're going to test using the testing template. Okay, well, the testing template, here's the assignment. The testing template for this is in step five. Here's step five. And then you would just click here on this testing template, replace your code in there to test your uh, get value method and hopefully it'll be working perfectly. Thanks for watching.